Hey, it's Owen at Happy, and today I'm excited to get to play with the brand new 1073 SPXD from Neve. It's essentially a 1073 preamp and EQ with an AD DA converter, so it can be used as a front end and monitor controller. As the marketing doc says, it's the world's first genuine 1073 interface. First, my favorite part, the history. Neve is a juggernaut of the audio world. Neve Electronics was founded in 1961 by the now legendary Rupert Neve. Their first mixes were tube based until they dived into transistor based design in 1964. Come 1970, the A88 console was conceived, whose preamps were the now mythologized 1073 units. Originally, they weren't intended to be anything but part of that mixing console. Anyway, the company got bought out in 1973. Rupert Neve left the company in 1975, and the company was combined with the cutting edge audio tech group AMS in 92. They went through a couple more hands, and by 2010, ended up in the loving arms of original AMS founder and engineer Mark Crabtree to be what it is now, a revitalized company with a firm handle on the past, an eye on the future, and are focused on the highest quality audio wares. Now, Neve preamps have nearly always been valued, but I'm pretty sure it was Dave Grohl and his 2013 Sound City movie that blew the whole game apart. The plot for the thing being him buying a Neve desk and transplanting it into his home. This was the moment that recognition grew from narrow-ish to absolutely chasmly. And from here, prices for any original torn from the frame preamps also blasted up. To the point where everybody is making a varying grade of Neve 1073 clones, from high quality down to very cheap Alcatron units. Even Behringer announced a 1073 unit just the other day. So what we got here is a Class A 1073 preamp with EQ, built by the original company in the UK, with someone who truly cares running the show. And it's got a digital interface and monitor controller built in. So it's kind of a one-stop piece for tracking singular instruments through an esteemed preamp and listening back to your mix. I guess it could be something you set up in a small studio to cover your needs, or take on the road with a laptop to easily wrangle new recordings and ideas in whatever unusual spaces you might find yourself in. Add up to 192K and 24-bit to boot too. And don't discount the ADAC connections for really expanding the scope of this thing. Neves do not have a transparent, pristine sound, and that's the exact reason why people love them. They sound their own specific way, that some people call vibey or musical, but others explain it by the transformers and inductors adding their own subtle harmonics and saturations to the signal you feed in. Let's have a look through the features. The first thing I did was bust it open to check the build quality. It's got exclusive spec Mariner input and output transformers, and big old hand wound inductors for that classic 1073 sound. Nice. As I run across the front and back of this box, I'll explain what everything does here. It's fairly ingenious. Starting in the most obvious place, the front side left, the front button enables the front XLR, line input, DI multi plug for either jack or XLR and disables the rear XLR connectors. The cool thing about this is it runs your signal through one of the input transformers so you can DI straight into a good sounding transformer. Digi is a cool feature. It sets one of the lines out on your door, number three, to run something you've already got there into the line amp of the 1073. Super cool and handy. Low Z switches the front or rear XLR input from 1200 ohms to 300 ohm impedance. Plus 48 is obviously phantom power. DI activates the 2 mega ohm impedance on the input jack at the front. And minus 20 is an input pad for the DI. Next up, we've got our gain knob in the classic idiosyncratic Neve style that you figure out how to use when you're coming up in a recording studio. The anti-clockwise section is the line gain, and the clockwise section is for mic gain, with an off section between the two, and the famous Neve off section in the middle of the mic gain, so that I guarantee will get you at some point when you're tracking somewhere. I always wondered why this was there and found it's because after this off point, a second transistor gain stage starts working to give you the extra juice. You definitely get more harmonics up this end too. 
Next, we've got our three band inductor EQs, a high shelf boost or cut, a selectable frequency mid boost or cut, and a selectable frequency low boost or cut. We've also got a high pass filter with four bands from 50 to 300 hertz. Phase, here is obvious. EQ switches the EQ section in and out, insert, INS enables the insert return and set on the rear, so you can plug in, I don't know, a compressor or something. And pre switches the insert circuit to before the EQ section, otherwise by default it's after. OP level is your output feed from the XLR channel, and it's pretty much a trim from the 5 dB boost if you need it. Pressing this knob also changes the output metering. IP is just after the gain switch, EQ is, yep, after the EQ, and OP is output. HP slash LS is the headphone and loudspeaker, aka monitor at level control, simultaneously. And if you press it momentarily, it completely cuts your XLR monitor output. Now, if you hold it in, it gives you one of four different monitoring options. Mon is the level to the monitor input. So if you use a different interface, you can run it through here to monitor and attenuate. SPX is the sound of what you're running through the 1073 channel. Door is what you're running on your door, obviously. And with door and SPX lit up, it gives you a blend of the two. And you use the blend knob here to mix your level to your own satisfaction with latency-free monitoring. Holding it in lets you select between outputs one and two, and three and four, three and four being the digital send into the 1073. Onto the deeper digital stuff, up here is where you select your sample rate, if your door hasn't already done that for you, which it probably will have. This thing interfaced so easily with this Mac. I literally just plugged it in and it worked. The future can be pretty pleasant, it turns out. I sure don't miss messing around with audio drivers. And over here is your sync rate. If it's lit up, it makes the 1073 SPXD your master clock. And if it's not lit, it relies on an external ADAT clock running the show. Let's take a look at the back now. We've got a word clock out, USB for attaching it to your computer, ADAT in and out so you can connect multiple channels to this via ADAT, a power supply input, monitor out, L and R, monitor in, L and R if you want to use another interface, light output so you can run this thing without the digital side, insert, return and send, line input and mic input. And there we have it, the Neve SPXD preamp and interface. Essentially a Neve 1073 preamp with EQ and an audio interface attached. At first I was a little apprehensive about having a pricey unit with just a single preamp on board running the door on my machine. But after playing with this unit, it 100% sounds like a 1073. Sure it's a modern 1073, but I'm thinking a lot of the vintage 1073 units I've used all sound a little different. And I'm sure at least 90% of this difference is from the aging components. I was stoked at how easy this thing was to set up. Straight up plug and play. And with a familiar sound to it straight away. The ability to digitally route a door channel signal into the preamp line is fantastic. And also that you can use it as a straight up preamp too. It's one of the few preamps built into an interface that actually sounds great too. I'm also glad the Neve company still holds its history dear and it hasn't become another corporate investment strategy brand name like has happened to so many other heritage companies. Now, it's not cheap. It's just over five grand for this unit. So it's probably not gonna be your first interface unless you're loaded. But for the working sound person that needs a small interface in perhaps a smaller studio, or for someone on the road who needs a great quality preamp and interface to travel with, it certainly fits the bill. Add ADAT to the setup and you've got a fair few more channels to play with too. Thanks for tuning in and I'll catch you next time for more audio stuff.